when we do classification with linear discriminants, we are clearly assuming that we have linear, linearly separable classes. So what this means is that we are assuming that there is a way to separate our classes through hyperplanes. There, are, there is a number of hyperplanes in such a way that our data sets are going to be uh, sitting on one side of, of, um, of, of at least one of those hyperplanes. And it may be that in general, we will need more than one hyperplane. In the case of two classes, we, we have discussed that one hyperplane is enough. But for more classes, we in general will need one hyperplane for each class. And so the point is going to be that um, we will aim to find um, one hyperplane for each class. And that hyperplane is going to have ideally all the data points from that class on its um, positive side. So um, what we do is for all classes, Uh, CI and uh, we may have, uh, let's say, capital K uh, such classes, we are going to define K discriminant functions and they will be uh, linear functions in, in, uh, in our discussion here. So they will be functions of X and we will have um, as parameters a vector W and uh, also a, um, a scalar W0. And the form of these functions is going to be uh, linear in um, uh, X with uh, the weight uh, vector being WI and this free term being W0 or W, maybe I indicate this WI0 just to make the point that this is going to be different for each class uh, CI. And we aim to choose this discriminant function in such a way that gi of x, given these uh, uh, parameters wi and wi0, we aim to choose it in such a way that it's larger than 0 if we have uh, x from our class ci. And it's going to be uh, smaller than or equal to 0 otherwise. So again, the idea is that we want to choose a hyperplane in such a way that all the data points from our class are going to be on the positive side of our hyperplane. Now, during testing, ideally, uh, given a data point x, we should have only one such discriminant function greater than zero and all the other ones should be uh, smaller than or equal to zero. But this is not always the case. And so as a decision, as a classification decision al algorithm, um, what we will choose is the following. So the classification decision for a point X is going to be choose class CI in such a way that gi of x is maximized. Um, and, and so obviously this is taken um, for all these uh, discriminator functions uh, g, j. As a matter of fact, it's really quite easy to see that this um, module of gi of x divide it to the norm of wi, or maybe wi is already taken with norm 1. This is the distance from our point xi to, to the um, hyperplane. Uh, to the hyperplane defined by uh, gi of x equals to 0. So with this observation, um, our classification decision can, can be translated in this way. We are going to choose the class um, that corresponds to the hyperplane, which is most distant from our data point x. Or in other words, um, if you like, we want this hyperplane corresponding to CI to be the best separator of our um, data points from all the other data points. So um, it, it has to be so that we maximize the distance of our data points um, uh, to, to this hyperplane we choose as a discriminator for that class.